What's up guys, Shea Stevens here, PDGA number 77522, and today we're taking a look at what's in my practice bag for 2024. Let's get to it. Alright, so about two years ago I was playing a tournament at Mercer and on hole 8, I lost one of my favorite drivers and luckily it came back to me two weeks later but during that period I had a bit of a freak out because I realized I had no disc like that one that I lost. I had thrown it for four years so it was a super beat in photon um, and I didn't know of any new discs I had that could replace it and I definitely didn't have any photons beat up enough just like that one to replace it so I uh, wanted to make sure I never got in that situa situation again so uh, that's how this practice bag came to be. I started building it out. And the goal of this bag is to either beat up discs uh, that I already bag in my main bag, but beat up new ones to the point that they are similar to the ones in my bag, so they're ready to, you know, jump up to the main bag if need be. Or just to try out new discs, you know, we have new releases from MVP, seems like monthly now, and just want to try something out, I throw it in the practice bag. And this bag is usually in my car, just so that way if an opportunity to play disc golf arises that I wasn't expecting, I have discs with me to play. Uh, or if I'm going to go play with friends or just play a fun round where I'm not really caring about, you know, shooting my personal best, uh, I bring this bag with me uh, just to, you know, experience some new discs and also work some stuff in to keep it ready on the bench in case it gets called to the big leagues. So, start with my putters. Putting putters, we have a little bit of a deviation from the norm. These are Electron Soft Anodes. I usually putt medium or firm. Uh, I have more of a spin putt style going right now, so I wanted to try the softer blend to see how I liked it. Uh, it's been pretty cold, so unfortunately they haven't been too soft. They've been more, you know, firm from the cold. So uh, hoping the weather gets a little bit warmer so I can see how these guys uh, feel when they're a little bit more gummy, a little more grippy. And then you guys always know I love to beat the heck out of Envy's. Uh, beat the heck out of an Electron Envy, make it nice and flippy. So you can see this guy's got a lot of wear and tear on him. Um, really just trying to keep beating it up. I want a little bit more, uh, a little more bubbled and bowed up top. Um, probably another like three to six more months of use on this guy and it'll be ready to go back to the shelf to be, you know, waiting to be called up to the main bag. And then I'll just either put in a new Envy or I might actually try a proxy. I have one, I got an Electron proxy just to, you know, beat up and see how I like that. If it's a little easier to get to flip. Uh, so this guy will be in the bag for a little bit more. Uh, Neutron Soft Envy. So this one I actually just took with me on a whim off my rack and took it to... Once around the mountain, 2023, it's a one and done tournament at South Mountain, and I won with it, and then I came home and I put it back on the rack, and I don't know why, it flew so darn well. So if you watch my uh, round at South Violin, you'll know I, I had a soft Neutron Envy in this bag, and I lost it on hole 14, so when I came home, I just saw this one staring at me like, dude, why aren't you bagging me? So it's in the bag now, working on it, see if I want to bump it up to the main bag. If you saw my review of it, I talked about how much I love this disc. The, uh, the Rebirth, the Prism Proton Envy, Eagles First Tour Series. I just love the torque resistance on this Envy. It feels like I, I could really hit it and not have a fear of uh, turning it over. Especially on forehands. This thing is very forgiving. I love it for kind of like a straight shot forehand. So if I'm pinned on the rough and need to like do a step out forehand, this guy feels really great. Always have a Plasma Entropy in the bag. I have a stock one in the bag right now. But this guy is a 2022 uh, MVP Open. These guys came out nice and flat top. I feel like they were a little taller maybe than the 2019 MVP open ones, but just the flat top feels really clean. I actually have two good forehand aces with this at Fulmore on holes three and five. So really digging this disc. And again, if I lose the one in my main bag, uh, I have a very good backup ready to go. And lastly, everyone loves it. Please MVP stock release of the tempo. I have a good little cash, but you know, I, I'm worried about digging into it. I'm excited to get the, Proton Soft ones for this year's OTB Open release. But yeah, this is just a great, reliable, stable to overstable four speed, uh, you know, putter mid hybrid. And I just love mashing on this thing and knowing I'm not going to lose it to the right. Uh, I call it the NVOS because I can get it to fly uh, just like my Envies, uh, but just, you know, it's going to go more, it's going to have a harder fade on it at the end. Uh, so I just really enjoy that flight out of it. And I have a, the, the rim on this thing is just crazy. It's kind of swirly, uh, white and orange. Looks really cool. And those are my putters in my practice bag for 2024. Next up to the mid-ranges, you'll see some familiar phases here. So 
I saw this special edition uplink in a used bin, and I had to grab it. I mean, look at that. Just black on black with the gold stamp. It is sick. Um, I have a stockpile of the Gyropalooza uplinks, and I feel like those came out a little bit taller. This has a bit of a lower profile, and I feel like the, the stock runs have a little more stability to them. Not much, but it's noticeable. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I had a stock uplink that I felt comfortable with in case I burned through all my Gyropalooza ones. Uh, so that's why this guy's in the bag. And, uh, you know, just a little bit of a different hand feel, but flies pretty comparable to the uh, to the uh, Gyropalooza one. So not a big change, and I'm really liking this one. Uh, new show to the bag, the Detour. So... Uh, if you heard me in my review, I said, I want to put this in my practice bag. And my goal is to beat this guy up to fly like a new uplink. Because I think, uh, you know, more stable discs that wear in hold those characteristics longer. So if this guy gets beaten in and holds that same flight as a brand new uplink, I will love it. Uh, but so far, I'm digging it. I just know I can get a little bit of turn out of it. Good pushing forward hyzer at the end. Uh, pretty workable. It, it flies comparable right now to my beat-in reactors. Uh, but again, I, it's in the practice bag because I want to try and beat it down. Uh, you know, to be a little more flippy and see what I can do with it. Speaking of reactors, these discs honestly changed my game. Fission reactors, absolutely love them. Uh, goal is I like to get them into like six months use of wear. Uh, because at that point, you know, well, straight out of the box, they pretty much fly dead straight and then, and then hyzer out. If I get them a little bit beaten in, like six months in, I get a little bit of flip and ride out of them, and I can push some really good distance on a mid-range. Like, like comfortably, a 340 shot with the with a reactor is very doable. And if I'm really trying to hammer it, 360 is probably uh, in the range. Uh, but I just like beating them in and having that just little flip and turn and ride and then fade. It's really great for hitting tunnel shots. Uh, this one is starting to get there. If you watched again the Sovi uh, round, I throw it, and it pretty much goes uh, just dead straight doesn't even have a chance to hyzer out uh so it's starting to get to that point where i like it so maybe a few more weeks or a couple months in the bag and i'll probably put a fresh one to, to uh, get it going have another pyro on backup so i have eight, i have one good backup to the one in my main bag right now and this is number two i'm working in the 2021 dan brooks wells bear stamp really sick i love the blue and the red combo metal flake uh i love the pyro eagle and simon talk it up all the time it's just great reliable overstable but not like stupid overstable so you can really stretch these out get some great distance before uh it has that fade uh just love this disc and then i didn't have a backup to my deflector in my main bag which i really love don freeman hooked me up with that one uh, and if i ever lose it i'll be sad but i have this otb open uh release and the best characteristic is this is proton soft i mean it almost looks plasma if you can see uh, but yeah, this is nice and gummy. So I like the variation on this. I know I can hit it on a sharp angle and it's going to hit and, you know, kind of compress and push all that energy or disperse it into the ground. Uh, or if I come in on a softer angle, I know I can get some really cool flare skips to turn corners with it. So very useful disc. And this one is extra beefy compared to normal deflectors, in my opinion. So I think this is like the most overstable run they've ever done. Uh, so yeah, just a fun disc to throw. And those are my mid ranges for 2024 in my practice bag. Moving on to fairways. I am pretty heavy on the fairway lineup actually, because these are the, the discs I'm trying to really fine tune and do a lot of work with in my disc golf game. Starting off, an old friend has made a return. The 2019 tour series for Elaine King relay. Uh, I had this in my main bag initially, but I found that my uplink and relay both flew pretty comparably. Had you know not much difference in distance, but I had more control with the uplink, so I kicked out the relay. But uh, I've been really working on cleaning up my form. Uh, I put a, a video into Robbie C and he gave me some good tips, and I have been since feeling uh, some some more pop on my drives, especially with my drivers. Uh, so. This is one of those discs, again, I walked past the rack and said, man, I had so many good memories with that disc, so many great shots. Why don't I give it another shot? So it's in the practice bag right now. Uh, just trying to work with it, see if I want to put it back in as a uh, flippy fairway. That guy's actually at my little utility slot here. And then I currently have, for the flippy fairway, the Fission Rhythm, although it's only a negative 2-1, but this was the return of Dome to MVP. It was the Fission Run, where uh, for a while they weren't doing domey discs because they had so many new plastic suppliers uh, giving them new source material. They had to uh, kind of eliminate variables so they could dial stuff back in. And this was where they felt like they were back in business. And we saw Dome come back because I love Domey Fairways. 
So I'm just beating the heck out of this. I love Fission Plastic. You've heard me say it over and over again. So I'm trying to beat this guy up to be a really super flippy disc. It's uh, It's got some good flip to it, but it still has a good bite at the end. I'm trying to get it to where it gives me that like that long panning Anheuser that doesn't come back. It just keeps riding that Annie, uh, Annie line over to the right for me on backhand. And not quite there yet, but just got to keep hitting it into stuff and hopefully it'll get there. Uh, Fission Volts. I am back in love with these. I kick the trance out because they just, they have like a weird stability point for me and I am just jamming on these uh, Fission Volts again. I have another one in my main bag. This one I think is also a 163 gram. Uh, signed by Scott Stokely. He came to a, he did a clinic at Sedgley. So I went down to visit that and I uh, got a signature. And if you saw me again at South Vineland, just ripping this thing. Just so good. It you know gives me a good a lot of flip and ride, then fights back at the end, so I don't have to worry about losing it in the right rough. And right now it's just in my practice bag, so I can just kind of dial it in again, just make sure I know what it does. And then I'll probably put it on the rack, probably in a month or two, and put a fresh one in the bag, just start working that one in again, so I have another season one on on a deck ready to go. I put back in the Cosmic Neutron Volt. So this run was notorious for being pretty darn overstable. A lot of volt throwers didn't like it because they were used to their volts flipping a little bit. This guy would not flip off the bat. So, uh, But again, I've cleaned my form up. I'm getting a little more pop on my drives. Uh, decided to put this one back in the bag, and I am loving how it flies. It gives me just a little bit of flip, not as much as the Fission, uh, but still good distance. And again, it's a little, you know, if it's windy out, I might go to this instead of the Fission. And it's just been pretty reliable. Also feels really nice on forehand. Really pretty color scheme as well. And uh, because these weren't that popular, I was able to snag up a bunch of them for like $10 or less. So I have a good little stockpile of these. So looking forward to working with it some more. And, you know, I think it might actually be a contender for the slot that my Proton Bolt is currently holding in the main bag. Love the Terra. Love everything about it. Just overstable, useful. I think most Firebird throwers or amateurs should be throwing this instead of the Firebird. You can get all the same beefy angles and shots out of it that you want from a Firebird. And you can also stretch this thing out. And with the extra glide, you get even more distance out of it. So I just love this 8-speed, uh, getting around corners with it. I love the Andy lines are the fun ones. Just kind of hitting like little tight flexes with it. Really fun disc. So uh, I have one in the main bag, and I'm just keeping one in the practice bag. So I have two of comparable wear. And likewise, after you know maybe another year or so, I'll probably knock this one out, put it on the shelf, uh, and then put a new one in just to kind of get that one going. And then finally, Fireball. So I have a Plasma Fireball in the main bag, and I wanted to try the Fission one out just because I love Fission. And what I'm finding is the Fission really pushes straighter for longer than my normal Fireball, but then dumps just as well. So I am digging uh, you know, that little extra bit of distance so I know I can you know, stretch this disc out more, but I also know it will fight back like a good Fireball will. Uh, hold five, six, seven at uh, full more is that hole where you're on the right side in the wood line essentially and you have to throw out and around back into the wood line on the right. Uh, this is like my go-to disc for that shot. Uh, so really digging it. Uh, it's, see, the only thing is uh, I'm trying to figure out on any lines, like there's like step out, like flex it uh, out of the rough down the fairway. Uh, a little touchy on those angles, so I'm still working with it, but that's why it's in the practice bag. And uh, those are my fairway drivers in my practice bag for 2024. If you watched my In the Bag for 2024, you saw the most dramatic change I made was limiting myself to just three drivers. Uh, I did that because first, um, I found that I had some overlap in the distance driver slots and it was it was hurting me in my disc selection. Um, I was you know trying to bite off extra distance and just putting myself in bad spots, out of bounds, and limiting my scoring opportunities. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I only bagged drivers I was confident with, that I threw a lot and I knew what I had to do, how I had to throw them, to make them do what I wanted to and achieve my goals. So down to three uh, distance drivers in the main bag. And uh, I also, I want to do more work with fairway drivers. As you see, I have a lot of fairway drivers in this bag and my main bag because I play wooded golf. I play, you know, windy Jersey golf. So I found that sacrificing that little bit of distance for, you know, added control and accuracy, well worth the trade-off. Uh, but the philosophy obviously carries down to my practice bag. I'm only bagging two distance drivers in the practice bag. First off, Fission Photon, pre-flight number, 166 gram. Nice little dome on it. This guy is backing up the white one in my main bag, which is the reason for all of this. That was the disc I lost and I felt, you know, helpless without. So 
This guy's the backup. I've been working him for a while now and uh, got it out of a used bin so it was already seasoned to begin with. It was a lucky find there. But this guy's like my, you know, Heiser flip to Annie, rollers, get out of jail free card, trick shots, all that stuff. That's what this disc is. And uh, it's almost to the point where I want it. It's, right now I'm really throwing it just to make sure I stay comfortable with it. Uh, in the event I lose the main bag one, I have this guy backing it up. Uh, and I feel a little bit better now if, you know, if I lose that main one uh, out of the main bag. I'll be sad, but I won't be panicking like I was before. So, uh, yeah, this guy's on deck right now and might be coming out of the practice bag soon to get a, you know, a fresh one in there and start beating that guy up. And to complement it, I have this Elaine King 5X Fission Photon. Uh, this one had two notable characteristics. First, pretty darn gummy. Not as uh, not as crazy as the Max Planks, but I can really sink my hand into it. It feels amazing on forehand. I can laser this thing with a really confident grip and know I'm going to hit it, uh, get a good spin on it. And the other uh, characteristic, though, is a bit of a higher party line than your uh, normal Fission Photon. So a lot of people didn't like how overstable it was. Uh, I don't mind it. I'm just getting used to it. If you saw like my first shot at Sovi, uh, hole one, I threw it and I was expecting it to kind of flip to flat and ride, uh, bite off some of that fairway distance, but nope, it held the line I set it on and, you know, hides it out early, but stayed safe. Uh, so now I'm just, you know, realizing I got to hit it flat and fast to keep it going uh, and it'll do work for me. Uh, but my goal with this disc is I want to beat it up to the point where uh I can get it to basically fly like a new normal Fission Photon or even a slightly used one because uh, those have just great little tight S shots and just very useful shot shapes. You can get out of a disc with that kind of stability. So if I can beat up a stable disc to fly like that and hold those characteristics, uh, characteristics for a bit, it'll be really sweet. So yeah, those are my drivers in my practice bag for 2024. And uh, this has been my in the bag for 20 or in my practice bag for 2024. Uh, like I said, though, this disc is very uh, fluid. I you know, take this in and out all the time. So if you're ever curious what's in my main bag or even my practice bag at any given time, I recommend you check out discrpm.com. It's a great tool. Uh, basically, you can load up your uh, a digital disc off bag with all the discs you use, take pictures of your discs, put notes in there. You can manipulate the flight numbers to reflect wear and tear on them. Uh, but you can you know look at your bag digitally, and then you can, uh, like, the for individual feature that I like the most, it's... Like, if you see a hole in your bag and you go out to the course, like, yay, like, I'm missing that overstable five or six speed slot. And I'm really, it's really hurting me. Like, what could I get to fix that? You can tap that spot on the grid and it'll actually give you recommendations of discs to fill that void. And if you're a, you know, a brand loyalist like me for MVP or if you're, you know, a disc craft thrower, an overthrower, whatever you, whatever you want, you can filter the results and it'll tell you what, it, uh, what discs in the brand you throw will best meet your needs to fill that void. So that's really cool. And then the other feature I like is you can join communities. So there's the in the bag community for the podcast, which I'm a member of. And I'm also a member of the MVP disc sports fan community on there. Uh, so you join those communities and you can see other people's disc golf bags and just look at, you know, where, uh, you know, what they use to attack their courses. Uh, there's a slight, uh, you know, skill uh, indicator. It asks you how far can you throw backhand and how far can you throw forehand. I'm hoping there's some more features. The developer is uh, really cool. He has his email listed on the website. You can email him some quality of life suggestions or enhancements. And uh, he's very resp uh, you know, responsive. He gets back to you pretty quickly. Uh, really cool to see him, you know, an active de developer taking something that's really cool and improving it, you know, as it's going. Uh, but maybe like a PDJ profile link. So you can see, oh, this guy, he's a, you know, MA2 player out of California. He's 945 rated. And this is what his bag looks like. And you could use that as a, you know, gauge to compare your bag to. Uh, but it's just neat to see other people's bags and, you know, how they build them out uh, to suit their needs. And uh, I've actually been looking at a lot of people's fairway lineups trying to, you know, figure out my attack. So uh, really cool website. Highly recommend you check it out. Uh, I'll link the MVP fan community uh, in the description below so you can check that out and, uh, you yeah, know, build your bag. But, yeah, this has been my uh, In the Practice Bag for 2024. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Again, I just want to thank you for all your support. If you have any questions for me, reach out. I'll do my best to answer them. Take care. Mm -hmm.